you said you're you're a violence interrupter. Yeah. Why? Um, so losing PJ in uh, August 2024, 2021, my, my eight-year-old losing him to gun violence, um, senseless gun violence. Um, even after the, the first interview, man, you did, I just honestly just feel like, you know, my purpose and passion is to definitely just try to change the narrative. Um, when I met with you that next day and did that interview outside of my mom's house, um, I just let you know, like, at the end of the day, like, I, I know God has a purpose for me and I got to live for it, so... Um, I just feel like, you know, my voice is powerful enough where I can try my best to get to as many people as possible with compassion and honesty and love, um, honest love, you know. What is a violence interrupter? Uh, so in my definition of a violence interrupter is just basically just being the middle person between the community and um, law enforcement and the laws and everything like that, just trying to really get an understanding to the community and what they need and what they desire um, so that we can cease fire. Um, that's basically just what we try to do. We try to cease the fire. We try to just get to the people before they actually commit a crime for a fast second decision. So, have you talked to some kids? Have you been doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do um, you hear? What do you hear back? Um, so basically, just hearing back from the kids, it's a it's a lot of lack of parenting. Um, I get the honest truth from the kids. They feel like their parents aren't listening to them. They don't hear them. They don't have a voice. Um, and just basically, they're acting out. You know, um, and also the biggest thing, too, is the pandemic has really been an effect to the kids. Um, just being in the house for two years with no socialization has really affected them. They they depressed. Um, they just dealing with just being around the families because if a child has a bad home, right, they're sitting in that home for 24 hours for two years. So, uh, you know, school was their outlet and that was taken away from them for two years. So that's definitely an impact to the young people as well. But they've been back in for two years now. Yeah, they have, but the trauma's there, right? So being in a house that maybe is in a home that you would want to live in, right? You you getting traumatized over and over again and not getting the help that you desire for mental health, you know, this is the outcome of it, so. They were talking about social media a lot yesterday. Yeah. What, what are you hearing about that? That's a uh, yeah, Social media is definitely like a big bully right now. A lot of kids are, are pretending to be people that they aren't. And then when you see these people in person, the crimes happen. You know, the fighting and, you know, the bullying going on on social media. It's definitely an impact. Um, it's definitely changing the trajectory of our uh, childhood for the young people right now. The childhood is different from my childhood, right? We didn't have all of this. I mean, we didn't have MySpace and all that back in the day, but we weren't on there to bully people. We weren't on there trying to portray to be somebody that we aren't. And um, I feel like that's definitely an impact to our young people right now. It's definitely hurting our youth. So what's your message to them? Uh, to my young people, I just want them to know that I care, and there's a lot of people behind them that care. Um, I just want them to be more vocal with their communication instead of acting out with bad behavior. So um, whatever they need and desire, man, reach out to somebody that can help them. And um, my organization definitely can help them. Um, I work for Hope in Action uh, with Community of Hope, and we're a violence interrupter program. Um, I know other violence interrupter programs in D.C. Um, that, that are out here on feet every day trying to get the job done, trying to get the work done. We're trying to help cease fire, um, squash beefs, and all of that. So, you know, just reach out to one of the organizations, and we, we that's what we're here for. We're here to help. We're not here to hurt you. So you're going to walk right up and see a group of kids? Yeah, I talk to them all the time. Um, I actually meet down Anacostia Park today with a couple of my kids from high school. So I'm working with Anacostia, uh, Prince of Anacostia. Um, I'm there every Wednesday for the next six weeks. Well, it's almost over now, so the next three weeks I'll be down at Anacostia Park um, just talking with the kids about the, the issues that they, they're facing in the community. So, carjackings, yeah. the youth violence, the gun crimes, six, six kids, actually more than that, high school kids have, have died violent deaths mm -hmm. um, this year. Um, yesterday, a 16-year-old, or two days ago, a 16-year-old died. He had his own gun. Yeah. They were chasing him. He was shooting back. He yeah. died in a shootout. Um, this whole thing about the kids aren't getting, there's this whole big debate raging, right, heading into the legislative session mm -hmm. about whether or not the laws have gone too far to forget. Where do you stand with all of this? And the Department of Juvenile Services and the law and mm -hmm. police and... I just feel like with the police, the laws, um, I'm, I'm great friends with PG, right? Um, and, and, and I have that bond with them, right? And I know that a lot of those guys really care. They really care. And um, I just feel like the laws and the people that make the laws just have to honestly just put themselves in the shoes of somebody 
uh, going through the situations that they're going through. Put yourself in those shoes and what, what decisions would you make, you know, for your own child. Um, and just and just try to just understand both ends um, because at the end of the day, it, it all stems from the beginning stages, right? And the beginning stages is their situations. These children really have bad situations and this is the outcome of bad situations. They can't help the fact of what they were brought up in. They can't help the fact of what they were birthed in, right? They might be having parents with mental health issues, whatever, and these are the outcomes of it. So we have to put all of that stuff into effect and um, try to get to the problem before it get worse. You know, this- does, does the Department of Juvenile Services need to be doing these things? Yeah. Because they're not, they're just releasing these kids. Nah, yeah, they have to. They gotta go to the root of the problem, get into these homes and actually put the footwork in and um, just get a little tighter on the parents um, and actually like get a little tighter on these kids and let them know that they serious about, you know, changing the trajectory of the community. Like we have to, we have to all work together. We can't point the finger at nobody right now. At the end of the day, we all play a part in it as a community and we have to get back to that community base right now. And this is all for your son. Yeah, for sure. Long live PJ to the death of me. All day. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. Appreciate